In this video, we're going to talk all about using maps in Java. I remember back when I was learning Java, just the concept of what a map was and what it was used for seemed complicated and hard to grasp. But what a map is and how you can use it is really simple. And you're going to have a great understanding of it by the end of this video. My name's John, and I put up a new Java tutorial video every single week. So if you like this video, please consider subscribing so you don't miss each week's video. I also have a full Java course available in a link down in the description if you're interested. So go check it out. What exactly is a map? What is it used for and what does it represent? So at its most basic level, a map is just a set of key value pairs. I think this is so much easier to grasp if we just uh, start with an example. So imagine if I'm running a company and I have a bunch of employees and they all have ID numbers. I would probably want something where I could put in an employee name and get their ID number. That is the kind of thing a map can do for you. We can create a map of employee names to ID numbers. So let's do that right now. So how would we create a map like that in our code? Here's how we can do it. We can do hash map emp IDs for employee IDs equals new hash map. We'll need to go ahead and import java.util.hashmap. Normally when you create an object, this is pretty much everything you need. But when you're creating a map, you need a little bit more. One of the things that Eclipse is complaining about here is it says hash map is a raw type. References to generic type hash map should be parameterized. So what does that mean? That means Java wants to know what this is going to be a map to and from. This is going to be a map of what to what. And it's just looking for data types there. Like you could have a map of integers to strings, uh, strings to doubles. Or if you created your own class like dog, you could create a map of strings to dogs. So here in our case, we want to create a map of employee names to their ID numbers. That's the keys and the values in our case. The keys are going to be the employee names and the values are going to be the employee numbers, the employee IDs. So it makes sense for the names to be a string and the employee ID to be an integer. So here's how we specify that. In angle brackets here, right after this hash map, we put in string, comma, integer. This tells Java that this is going to be a map of strings to integers. The keys of our map are going to be strings and the values are going to be integers. Also to get rid of this little warning here on new hash map, we have to add what's called a diamond operator. And that's just less than greater than. That might seem kind of weird, but it comes from um, in old versions of Java, you had to re-specify the types of the keys and values of your map here. So you had to put in string and integer again. But later on, I think it was in Java 7, they changed it so you could just take that out and Java would just infer that obviously you just mean the same type of hash map that you declared up here. So now all you have to do is put in this little diamond operator and you're good to go. You don't have to repeat yourself. So this is declaring an employee IDs hash map. There's nothing in it yet. But we're telling Java we want a map of strings to integers. So we're going to map employee names to their IDs. So this map will hold that information for us and allow us to do that lookup. So you might be one. So you might be wondering why do we have hash map here? Why can't we just say um, map string integer and new map? Why do we have to say it's a hash map? Well, in Java, this map is actually what's called an interface. The map interface just specifies what kind of methods a real map implementation have to support. And there are different types of implementations of that map interface. And a hash map is just one of those implementations. It's probably the most common map implementation that you see uh, used by programmers. The way you interact with them is going to be the same. It's just how it works underneath that's a little bit different. But for our example, we're just going to use hash map. All right, so now I have this employee IDs map how do I actually add a new mapping to it? So let's say I'm an employee of this company. My name is John and my employee ID is 12345. To add that value to my map, I would just say empids.put. And you can see here, I just need to specify the string key and the integer value. So the key will be the employee name, in this case, John. And the value is the employee ID itself, which is an integer uh, 12345. So now my map knows that for the key John, it has the value 12345. And of course, you can add more. So we can say amp IDs dot put uh, Carl. Uh, his employee ID will be 54321. And amp IDs dot put Jerry. And his can be 8675309. Just so we can get a quick visual of what this map looks like, uh, let's go ahead and print it out. System dot out dot print line amp IDs. Save that and run it. And it prints out what our map looks like in a very clear way. See, Carl has an ID of 54321, John has 12345, and Jerry has 8675309. It's a mapping of keys to values, employee names to their employee IDs. One thing you'll probably notice is that these are in a different order than we added them in. I added John before Carl, but this has Carl before John. One of the things about maps is that it doesn't guarantee a certain order. It's there to store these key value pairs, and that's what you care about. You don't necessarily care about the ordering. You just want to know that the name is properly linked up, paired with that ID properly. All right, so we can print out the whole thing, but how do we get one specific value? So I put in all these employee IDs. How do I, say, get Carl's employee ID from my map? 
To do that, I can just say emp IDs dot get. And you can see you pass in the key. So if I want to get Carl's ID, I just do emp IDs dot get uh, Carl. And we can just print that out so we make sure uh, we're getting the right value there. System out print line emp IDs dot get Carl. Save it and run it. And we can see we got Carl's ID successfully. So this is what a map allows you to do. You can store key value pairs. This key corresponds with this value. And later on, you can look them up. Oh, what value corresponded with this key? In this case, what's Carl's employee ID? And we can look it up easily uh, like this. And this is really the basics of using a map. You can put values in there in key value pairs. And later on, you can look up a key and see which value it corresponds to in your mapping. But put and get aren't the only two methods that are supported by this hash map. What else can we do? Well, one thing we can do is just check to see if a certain key exists in our map. So if we wanted to see if Jerry had an employee ID in this table, we could just do ampids.contains key and pass in Jerry. And it says true because Jerry does exist in the map. But if we put in George, we get false because George was never added to our map. Another cool thing you can do is see if your map contains a certain value. So if I want to see if I have the employee ID 6 in my map, I can just do dot contains value and pass in the number six. The number six doesn't exist anywhere in our mapping yet, so we get false. But if I put 8675309, we see that I get true because it does exist in our set of values in our map. It's also good to know that if you do empids.put and you put the exact same key that you had before, so let's say I put in John again, but instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I put in uh, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. What that will do, if John already exists, it will override that current value and update it with the new value. So let's copy paste printing out our employee IDs map after that. And at the beginning, you can see that the key John had the value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And at the end, it was updated to be 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. The put replaced that value. So put will add a key value pair and it will update a certain key's value if that key already exists in your map. There's another similar method here and it is called replace. So there's a subtle difference between replace and put. So if I say replace the value uh, for the key John with uh, 777, print out our mapping again, we can see that it successfully replaced the value at John with 777. However, if I instead say uh, replace Kramer with 777. Well, Kramer doesn't exist anywhere in our map yet, so what do you think it's going to do? Let's run it and see. Well, it actually looks like it didn't change the mapping at all. And that's because this replace acts a little bit differently than the put. When you run replace and this key doesn't exist in your map yet, it won't do anything. It'll only replace the current value if it does exist. Whereas put, if it doesn't exist, will go ahead and add it to your map. So you just need to know that so you know which one works best for your particular use case. So similarly, there is actually a method called put if absent. And you can maybe kind of take a guess at what that does. That will only add the key value pair that you specify if that key doesn't already exist somewhere in your map. So for example, if I said put if absent, uh, John uh, 222, print out the map again, we see that John still has the value 98765. It doesn't have the value 222 because put if absent only does the update of that key value pair if it's not already currently in the map. So if instead of John, I said Steve, run that, we see that since Steve wasn't in the map already, it does get added when we use put if absent. Now, what if you want to remove a key value pair from your map? It's pretty straightforward. You could just do empids.remove and pass in the key of what you want to remove. Let's say we want to go ahead and remove that Steve entry that we just put right here. Print out our map again, run it. We can see that the Steve value that was added here has now been removed. Another important thing to note is that these two types that we're using here for the key type and the value type in our hash map, those have to be Java classes. They can't be primitive types. So things like lowercase int or lowercase long or float or double, those won't work here. And you get kind of a strange looking error if you try. It says insert dimensions to complete reference type. That's a pretty vague, weird error, and it can be hard to understand what that means the first time you run into that. But to get around it, you just need to use the full uh, Java wrapper classes for those. So for lowercase int, use capital I integer. For lowercase float, use uppercase float, etc. And everything will still work exactly how you want. So I understand that maps can certainly be confusing the first time you're kind of getting introduced to them. 
And there's all these different methods and stuff that we went over that you can use. But the really important thing to remember is that a map is just a collection of key value pairs. It's like a lookup table. So in this case, we have employee names to their IDs. You could have um, golf players to their golf scores. You could have like your pets as the keys and their birthdays as the values. Anything where you need to create like a relationship like that, that's where you're going to want to use map. It's a really useful tool and definitely one you're going to want to be familiar with and comfortable with if you're going to be learning and using Java or any other programming language. If you like this video or learned something, please let me know by leaving a like and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss each week's new video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.